Good morning. I really slept well the last hours. Let me get out of here. Look at this gorgeous view. Trying to fix here the door so it stays open. Well, there was lots of action yesterday night here at 11 or so. Uh, and I heard, I heard the helicopter and it hovered about here for over 10 minutes and uh, picked somebody up, I think. There was some accident. Somebody must have been there on that mountain. And then I started to sleep again and half an hour later, another helicopter came. And this time he looked, uh, he searched with lights uh, about here in this, in this area. And I think he picked up people the helicopter stayed in the air and then 50 minutes later another one came this is uh, of course where i came down from galt Hüppingen yesterday and i believe uh, there were some accidents some people got fell down Uh, when I came down yesterday from the mountain at 5 or so, I still saw some people who were heading up to the mountain. And because uh, it doesn't get really dark, uh, they are not afraid of going up at night. And the night before, I, uh, when I was, my tent was about uh, in this area here, somewhere, uh, I got up at night and uh, looked out of my tent and I saw a few hikers with headlamps uh, who were coming down from the mountain. It was at 2 o'clock at night or so. And I think even though this mountain is not, uh, from my point of view, not a really dangerous mountain, it's blocky terrain and a lot of rocks you are going to run over at night, uh, even if it's not very dark, it's, it, there are so many places where you can break your leg or your hip or whatever. It is really not a good idea to do such things uh, when you cannot see very well, when you need a headlamp. So I had here three rescue missions last night. And I hope those hikers do well in the meantime. And I think it's for me it's now time to get up and have some breakfast. It's such a great uh, place to be for me, so I don't want to exchange this nature with any five-star hotel at night uh, the constant constant noise of the water <laughs> at one point I woke up and I thought there was a storm uh, because it was also very windy my tent was shaking but then I realized it's probably coming from these rapids here making lots of noise and also here in front of me so my breakfast is ready today I have an oatmeal and I'm going to enjoy it now 
I'm packed up. It's very late, but I was very tired yesterday and wanted to sleep and don't want it to rush. And uh, now I'm ready and I'm starting to hike southwards to Lerwaspu, if I pronounce it half uh, correct. Yeah, take the tracking poles. Let's start going. There is the trail. A stony trail. Yesterday I got a lot, got several sunburns, even though I put some protection cream on my skin, but it was the ultraviolet radiation was too intense on the mountain and I got burned. I did hang on my solar panel on the left side from where the sun is coming and it charged my power bank. My solar panel has only a capacity of 6 watts but it's very light. It's weight is less than 200 grams and in my last uh, vacation in Norway I've tested it that it even works when on overcast conditions of course it doesn't charge as much if there is no sun but if you hang it on your backpack to the right side and you charge for, say, for, say, five or six hours, that's enough to charge all my batteries. So it's a good solution for me. I want to soak in a little bit this uh, nature before leaving and uh, take with me some memories. The trail gradually ascends up through that valley there in front. problem. This one was very easy. Another river. And this one it is even difficult to approach.
Very nice. Yet another creek with red color. crossing two big rivers and the nice thing here is that there are bridges this is completely different than the Lingenalpen where I was last year where there are, there are almost zero facilities because very few people go here but Jotunheim they have created the necessary facilities. Quite a steep ramp. <laughs> There in the valley is a big glacier and this uh, river comes from there. Another bridge adventure. Well, it's completely dry here. It's mid July and Look how much clearer the water is. So the blurry color of the river down in Spitterstuhlen was because of the river we have just crossed, which came from the glacier. I told you it is a glacier river. This one is uh, clear and I'm sure you can drink even the water of it.
look at that nice color. see the long way I still have to go so the way continues to the right and you see already this uh, interesting mountain I think it is called Kirka or Shirka maybe is the correct pronunciation I'm not sure because K is often read being read as an H in Swedish and uh, I have to go up and then there are, it turns to the right, uh, the valley and then there are a few lakes and then uh, I, there is Leer Vispu. And again, it's something like Spitterstuhlen where you can uh, camp and I, I think you can also drive there with your car, we will see. that you find water every day in speaking the bottle so you never need to carry too much water with you and it's also filled Navigating to this rock and sit there a little bit, eat some nuts. I'm now hiking for one and a half hours, it's not much, but it is noon and I will eat something. my lunch and continue through this rocky trail as you probably can hear the wind has picked up from the south and I suspect it will get worse when nearing the pass Because of the poor road condition, my speed has dropped, but it is, it is as it is. It's go completely going to melt, I'm afraid. And now, this is the part which is a little bit steeper, but nothing to be too much. And I have to pass over this uh, pass, I think it is 1450 meters or so. There should be some lakes behind immediately. I have to cross this maze of water. which passed uh, me when I was uh, putting together my tent. Kind of strange. 
because I'm an old guy and they are young. They should be much faster than me. <coughs> Now find the best place to cross the river. Yes. Okay, all fine. I'm dry. And up we go. like in the French Alps. Look at the reindeer herd. They prefer to stay on the snow because it's so hot these days. I guess it's here about 10 degrees or so. I wonder if this is the highest point. Well, it was very easy. And here is the first of our lakes. What do you think? There was pool, four kilometers. I'm at the highest point. The wind has picked up a lot and here is the magnificent Kirka mountain. I'm calling it Kirka because I don't I'm not sure about the right pronunciation and I'm just speculating maybe they named it after their church like we have seen in Lom. That would mean church in that case. And behind me, there's another magnificent nice mountain. And to complete the 360 panorama, this is the way I came. I'm standing north of Kirka. Very interesting. And this is the way to Lervaspu. view of, of the lake. The first one we have seen before is in the back. 
they are connected by a small channel. And the next leak. The trail is mostly horrible. There are so many stones that slow you down. Here it is okay, but ahead at the lake, as you can see, there are big rocks, and so it will take a long time to pass there, I'm afraid. Look at these nice flowers. In German we call this wool grass. Don't know how it is called in English. So. What a magnificent mountain Kirke is. More lakes and a terrible trail. Shall I take the swamp or the blocks, blocky rocks? But I could briefly see the lake of Leer Vaspu in the distance. So it's not very far anymore. View back to Kirka and the very difficult trail I took. It was really tiresome and took a long time. Still some way to go to Leer Vaspu. I'm almost at Leer Vaspu. Just let me sit here a few minutes. Look at Kirka. Actually, from the right side, there is a hiking trail up and I plan to do it, but now I'm thinking I will not do it. I was thinking of uh, setting up my tent at the height there at the pass to the next, uh, I'm going down here uh, to the south, but uh, I looked on the map and I think there is no water. So that's not a good idea for me, water is very important. And I will not do that and I will certainly not try this mountain with a 15 kilogram backpack. And this is Leer Vaspu. Nice mountains in the back. This dirt road is the one I'm going to follow now, I think, I hope. And then uh, find a place for my tent, pitching up my tent. 
leaving behind Lier was Bu. Next, tomorrow I should be at Olaf's Bu, which I expect to be much smaller. I think there are no cars going there, there is no road. Uh, I don't know what, how it looks like. This lake around, it took, took me more than an hour. And now I'm quite uh, tired and exhausted. I think I have used up my calories. I'm looking for a place to set up my tent. If I can't find any place, I might go down and a little bit away from these trends and set up on the shore, but there's a small lake behind uh, on this road. Uh, when it turns to the right, I'll first look how it's there. I have arrived at the small link, lake, I told you before, and I'm looking for a appropriate place to pitch up my tent. I think this is a good place for me for the night. And today this episode will end here.